All right. Our our next guest uh, is celebrating an impressive milestone. You know. Yeah. So. Yep. So so what is that milestone? Um, it is the three year anniversary of when I started Pro Worship. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> so. And it's a great hashtag, Clone Wars Saved. Oh, it was yeah. a massive moment. Uh, yeah, that was. All those fans. I particularly remember when that first came out on YouTube, I was like losing my mind. And then when I eventually started, I was like, I like, I didn't know like what username I wanted. Mm-hmm. But then I eventually fell upon that. I was like, you know what? Like, it's already there. The hashtag's already baked. Maybe like, I don't know. Like, uh, it just felt right. Yeah, no, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, and your uh, account's really great. I have it uh, oh, thank you up so here. Much. So um, I guess over the past, um, you've been running the account for three years now. How has it, how has it kind yeah. of changed, uh, you know, over, over those three years? Are you doing anything different or still kind of just doing the same things you set out to do in the start? It originally started, like, I don't, I don't really think I had, like, a structure when I started. Because, like, I really just started, like, posting, like, just, like, random things, like, oh, you know, like, they canceled the Clone Wars on Netflix, and I posted about that, or, oh, mm-hmm. you know, like, here's a collage of, you know, lightsaber colors, and I posted about that. But, like, I feel like sometime 2020, it's a rough estimate, um, mm-hmm. is when I, like, started going, oh, you know, these posts, they do well, or this one I like doing. So I eventually landed on, um, like, fact posts. I continued doing those. Okay. I, I started like question of the day posts where I basically like re- like at, pose a question to like myself and like answer it, and then like it's like the entire Instagram caption. I I started those were really good for me to do like repetitively because it helped me work on like like uh, like just like getting more into like like Star Wars and stuff and like this like the scene posts where I like do like the image image versions of all these different scenes and like modify them and like put allusions to things and all those those i feel like they were really successful so i just ended up really doing those and started getting a knack for like experimenting with them oh awesome and everyone listening out there you should definitely go check it out um you can find it it's on instagram it's at clone wars saved um yeah and you can go go kind of check out what's going on over there on the account yeah I always thought it was a, a great account, kind of covers, like, fan fiction's questions. Uh, it was a vibrant, positive community. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. I, um, with the fan fiction specifically, I think those came about a little bit later, but I don't know. I feel like, I mean, like, I'm, like, like, school-wise, I'm, like, I'm a very, like, good at, like, English, creative writing, all those things. So I decided, like, to start with, like, just, like, try it out, see if it worked, and it's, I think it went pretty well, like, I mean, like, I think, like, the first ones I really did were those small, what will you become, sort of, short stories where I, like, covered, like, Clone Wars characters that, like, didn't have stories past then, and I just did those, and they were, like, they were very small, but they were, but they were, like, a good start, and then, my first major one was the search for Ed- Ezra Bridger, and that was quite a task to yeah. do. But yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would definitely go back and change a lot of things looking back on it now. But same here. But like, I, I feel, I thought it was like a good jumping point to see like how I could handle a massive story and see like what, like what my capabilities are. And yeah. now with. No, um, so I'm working on its sequel right now, and it's been, I've spent, like, way more time and dedication on it, because, like, it's been, you know, two, what, like, two years, so, like, I've really just, like, I, like, I on, on and off write it, but, like, it's been something that I think I have way more experience in to write a sort of more cohesive and, I don't know, a story that I think, like, I really could, like, no, this is something I spent more time on. Yeah, it's a it's a really fun account. Uh, no, I yeah. really 
enjoyed it and uh yep. I, I mean like uh clone wars i love that it's saved and <laughs> that's right yeah i think we have clone wars saved to to thank for it really yeah yeah no yeah that was <laughs> no it, it, that was a fun day it was it was really just like yeah really so happy three-year anniversary yeah, to you. your count and uh i guess we can dive into the batman of it all we can yeah. start with the sequels i guess so uh, the main three of the sequels are uh, Race Skywalker, Finn, and yep. Poe. Uh, we can go Clone Wars Saved and then Brian. Um, what kind of uh, Batman characters do you think that the main three are most like? Well, that's. I think that's a hard one. I think. I think Ray first and foremost. I mean, like the obvious, the one that jumps to my mind is like. I would say Catwoman because they're both very. It was like characters who definitely like have a history with like their parents and their past and like they it, their whole mission is to like work it out and figure out like what am I in in relation to this. Yeah, it's it's easy to take, you know, kind of the the yeah. lead characters or the main part yeah. of the trio and, and just automatically, you know, assign them to to being Batman. But but yeah, I mean, Ray doesn't really come off as like a Batman type of character to me. Um at all so uh what what about you cassia who do you think would be a good ray we get we got a cat woman there i'm holding my back <laughs> i haven't decided yet <laughs> um i would say i mean ray in seven and eight is kind of more of a it's kind of more of a heroine story and then in nine it's more of a hero's journey mm -hmm. um so I guess maybe if we're kind of like saying this is Batman, uh, I would say Ray is kind of like Nightwing, a Nightwing oh, yeah. that like became Batman. That's what I would say. Okay, yeah, that's fair. I would, I would probably classify her as as yeah one of the one of the side sidekicks. So yeah, like a like a Robin or a Nightwing type of a character who you know is is kind of learning, is desperate to mm -hmm. to kind of take the reins herself in a way, uh, you know. It, starts out as as being reluctant and as as we kind of kind of go along she's like yeah. i said kind of you know really wants to to take charge and then eventually you know kind of mm -hmm. becomes becomes that figure by the you know by the time we finish with the rise of uh skywalker but yeah i think definitely one of the one of the sidekicks there for me uh for ray now as far as um uh, batman itself goes i i don't know i think i would maybe especially like robert pattinson's version of the batman I would maybe see him as being like the Poe Dameron of this where, oh, yeah. yeah, you know, he's, uh, he's doing what he thinks is right and what he thinks is best for everyone, but it's not always, <laughs> it doesn't always seem to work out. It's a little bit, yeah. um, hot headed at moments. Um, but you know, the, the good, the goodwill and the good faith is there. Um, it's just not always, not always working out. So I think especially like in these like kind of younger iterations of Batman, like we see, um, you know, at the beginning of like the Dark Knight trilogy and uh, Robert Pattinson's Batman here. All right. And then uh, what do you guys think of uh, Finn? I feel like with Finn, he's a very interesting character because it's like he comes from like a darker sort of background and he learns to choose for himself. So I don't know. That would I feel like that would be. I feel like that would be like a little bit like trickier but like if we were going like even like outside of the batman movie itself i feel like one idea that just popped into my head would be um the um injustice games version of harley quinn oh yeah okay she she was um i've never really played the games but i've been into the story so i like see i see the story and i understand it it's like she was also i mean she was more like willing and like on her own accord being evil and Finn was like not willing, but they both broke free and they both chose a better path. And I feel like that's, there's something there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I definitely like kind of the, the flip side of mm -hmm. her where they kind of, you know, are choosing, choosing the opposite path to take. Yeah. I like that quite yeah. a bit Um, here. I was, I was thinking of Finn as more of like, um, more of like an Alfred type of a figure, Um, you know, someone uh, who's, oh. who's always there to, to kind of support, and oh, lend yeah. a hand and you know be available 
uh, to people as as they need him. Um, but yeah, that's that's a really good point. And you can see kind of that the turmoil in him, you know, especially in like The Last Jedi, um, you know, when he's deciding whether he's going to, oh, going yeah. to stay or going to go. Um, yeah, so I, I like that uh, that comparison with uh, Harley Quinn there. Uh, what about you, Cassie? What do you think about uh, Finn here? Yeah, so for me, Finn reminds me of Tim Drake because uh, I think mm. he's like Tim Drake is kind of like one of the best uh, Robins, I would say. Like, not quite. Uh, or am I thinking? Of, yeah, not Jason Todd. No offense to Jason. No, Todd, he, no, he would. Like, no, I don't think. So. I don't think Finn. You know? I don't think Finn would be Jason Todd. There's too much. Yeah, there's like I feel like there's like too much rage there. Like Jason Todd, obviously, like he's a very. No matter what story is in it, he's a very interesting character. But it's like he's he's not really defined as like the morally morally sound Robin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and of course, like Dick Grayson, he becomes like a better version mm-hmm. of like Batman. But like I think like Tim Drake could become Batman, but like become um, better than Bruce. I think. Like, mm-hmm. so, so that's what I kind of think, like, cause Finn just kind of seems like to me, like the most, uh, heroic of the yeah. three. Like mm-hmm. he has less of, I feel like both Ray and Poe, what they go through, it's like, they, they like question their own place in the story, but like Finn, he, he like, they, like they're more, I would say like they struggle with it more, but like Finn has an easier time of like navigating his own moral complex and i feel like that would make him i feel like that would make him like a tim drake like character yeah then the last of the three is poe what do you guys think of poe yeah so so yeah i'd I'd kind of already mentioned that i think that poe is the most um kind of like the like the batman figure um here um in this uh sequel trilogy um you know like just just because you know he his his intentions are good um mm-hmm. but you know they don't always uh come to complete fruition um and you see a lot of that especially in this newest version of uh the batman you know where you know he his heart and his mind are in the right place it just you know sometimes he bites off a little bit more than he can chew so to speak so i think mm-hmm. that poe is probably the batman um you know here in my in my <laughs> batman yeah. star wars yeah. multiverse in my head anyways mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. But what about you, uh, Clone Wars Saved? Uh, who do you think uh, you have for Poe? I feel like what would be a really good fit is um, Nightwing for Poe specifically. Like, just like, and not like any specific variation, just like the character in general. Like, I think there's a lot of, like, obviously there's a lot of, like, charisma and, like, sarcasm and all those things. But, like, if you, like, look into it deeper, it's more, like, they're the character that, like, makes like they like make mistakes and they do like they're they're, like more like irrational about their decisions like when they're like not fully developed but as time goes on and they mature into a more like sound version of who they who they are they really just like they really know what they know it's right and wrong and they know how to do it yeah i kind of see uh, Poe as like a young Robin who is mm-hmm. discovering Nightwing kind of like in that uh, kind of like transformation time like right out like right out of like saying screw you Batman and you know like I want to be my own like hero and like figuring out what that means yeah so it's like kind of discovering it and yeah that that's how I kind of see it um, mm-hmm. and then uh, kind of like the the main three of another generation, Luke, Leia, and Han. Uh, what do you guys think uh, of those characters? Like, who are they like? Yeah, so for so for me, the one that comes to mind right away here of of this three, I mean, I, I think that I had already um, kind of used Alfred, but um, mm-hmm. I I kind of see Leia as as the Alfred kind of caretaker. Um, you know, of the family, like she's the one that's kind of holding everything together, um, you know, through its darkest moments. So that's that's kind of the obvious one to me um, as we go into, you know, into our uh, original trilogy here, I guess. Mm-hmm. I feel like um, if sorry, if I go next, um, I feel like with Leia specifically, what popped into my mind was 
uh, Barbara Gordon Batgirl, but like, I feel like both her as Batgirl and maybe as Oracle as well. Like she's always there as like the sort of, not necessarily like the, you know, like the voice that Batman hears like from the Batcave, but like with like more so like the voice of reason for like Han and Luke because they're mm-hmm. both like impulsive characters and Leia's the one that can provide like, here's why this is stupid and why you shouldn't do it. Like, and she she's more like, she has like the bigger picture in mind. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, what about what about you, Cassie? Of these three, do any uh, pop straight into your straight into your head there for for any of these yeah. ones? Yeah, it's really funny because Luke in the sequel trilogy kind of reminds me of Jim Gordon. Uh, oh yeah, and then Leia kind of reminds me of like Barbara Gordon, maybe like an older, you know, kind of like when she's like her dad's age, you know, uh, like in uh, Batman Beyond, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, then Han reminds me of the Alfred, which is funny because we mm-hmm. like some things we just are very similar on, and then some of them uh, uh, we have a lot of variety, which I think is cool because yeah. Batman characters and Star Wars characters are kind of both archetypes, but we kind of interpret mm-hmm. them differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, I can definitely see yeah, the comparison uh, between uh, Luke and Commissioner Gordon. I guess yeah to to some extent i w- i would say i think that commissioner gordon is more more en- encouraging and <laughs> more willing mm-hmm. to to throw you know batman out there to yeah. help kind of kind of serve the purposes for gotham city than maybe luke was with with ray um you know and and maybe even leia and uh you know but but yeah i i can see some definitely definite parallels there yeah I guess it's a Jim Gordon that had a bad day, you know. And, <laughs> oh yeah, is a yeah. is a grumpier Jim Gordon, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but who do you guys kind of like see Snoke as? Well, that's interesting. Definitely not the Joker. I would not say the Joker right off the bat because I feel like there's a lot of seriousness within Snoke, and well, he is like a pawn. Mm-hmm. I would say like he thinks he has his own agenda. So if I had to. I mean, the first one that comes to mind for me is Scarecrow. It's like, it's all about fear. It's all about trying to like gain the upper edge and like strike fear and you're like Kylo specifically with like the lightning bolt scene and Dre with like using the force. Like it's, he's very focused on intimidation tactics, I would say. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good one. I'm trying to think if, um, if I could really see him as anything. Yeah, definitely, definitely not a, a Joker type, type of a figure. Um, yeah, I kind of could see him as any of any of like the like the crime boss type yeah. of the of the big bosses in a way. Um, just because, yeah, because he's he's just kind of pulling the strings. He's not really the one, you know, doing anything. He's he's just kind of this puppet master type of a he's figure. He's just the front man. Yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly, exactly. So, so yeah, so I think I'm I think I'm gonna mm-hmm. gonna kind of fall in line uh, right there. Uh, what about you, Cassia? Who uh, who was your Snoke in the Batman uh, universe here? Um, yeah, I'm kind of in between two characters, like Clayface and Penguin. Oh, mm-hmm. those are interesting ones. Because Snoke just has an interesting face. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, that's, that's true, that's true. And, like, and then he has, like, a golden robe, you know, so I'm like, it seems like he's someone who cares more about, like, a finery, you know, than, like, say, Emperor Palpatine. Yeah, it's like, it's more about, like, how he looks. It's like he wants to, like, look evil but like necessarily whether he you know does well at what he does it's like less important than how he looks and how how the idea of him i guess reflects on who he is yeah 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 and i i guess i could kind of see that that parallel with the penguin um mm-hmm. and, and a lot of the portrayals of the penguin he always comes off as kind of like this daft yeah. <laughs> character yeah. but but yeah kind of kind of to that you know he he's he's pretty ruthless and like like I said, he, he reminds me of, you know, any of kind of those like crime boss type um, mm-hmm. type of figures. And that's, you know, definitely who who the the penguin is. So, uh, yeah, I could I could go along with that. That makes sense. Yeah. So who do you guys kind of see Hux as? Hux. I feel like that's I feel like that I feel like that should be like a very easy one because he's very I don't want to <laughs> say one dimensional because like all these characters, they all have their own backstory. Mm-hmm. Different people, they like like not everyone like reads into all those things like i i don't think i've read into much like huck's things but like i feel 
with his character, I feel like certainly like Pen- Penguin for him, but like the more, not like the recent Batman version, which was really, really good, but like, because mm-hmm. that was like a, a unique portrayal of Penguin. But I feel like like the earlier cartoon versions of him, like it's very same in the essence with like Snow with appearance, but instead of appearance, it's words for like, um, Hux, because he's all about like he wants to like mean something through like what he says, and like that's the same thing like Penguin does. Like he tries to like to like say like oh to like put I want to say like he tries to put like the most like fear as possible he can into what he does, and while you know usually nine times out of ten it doesn't have much effect, it it's still like. And it gives him the sense of validation, like, oh, I am doing a good job at, like, running this part of this crime organization, and I'm doing, I'm not, like, just, like, saying things, like, my words mean something when they really don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, Hux, Hux is kind of, kind of tricky, um, mm-hmm. in a way, because, I mean, I, you know, ultimately, he, uh, he, he kind of turns allegiances, but it's not really oh, yeah. because he, because he is, He's a good person. It's because he's doing it. He's doing it for himself. So, so, so in a way, I could almost see him as like, a, kind of like this uh, Catwoman, uh, Selena oh, Kyle yeah. archetype, where mm-hmm. you know is he, he is probably probably more on the bad side and doing bad things, but you know is is really just kind of in it, in it for himself. Um, so, so maybe a, a little bit of that, and maybe like a little bit of like the Mister Freeze. Uh, persona who is is just mm-hmm. kind of you know yeah. doing doing the things to preserve i think mr freeze's backstory was uh uh something with the, with his wife was sick right yeah or was specifically yeah. like she had some sort of illness and it was like yeah he, that's right he eventually got like his his like i'm not sure if they're i can't remember if their powers or like if it's like technology but like he he like cryo freezes himself to like save her or not save her but like cries to like get what he wants to get her cure to get what he wants yeah exactly exactly so that's that's kind of what i was thinking about hux was he was he, you know he's uh, <laughs> maybe not even as noble as mr as mr freeze mm-hmm. but you know just no. doing the things that he does you know for uh you know kind of these uh selfish his own his own gain there so yeah i think a little bit of uh, a little bit of catwoman a little bit of mr freeze uh but that leaves you cassia hux this is this is a tricky one i think um perhaps mine is really superficial um two-face because in nine he's like oh i'm the secret spy you know uh Mm -hmm. and yeah it just kind of seems like he kind of flips like a little little coin you know so yeah that's my really deep answer i feel like that's i feel (laughs) like there's actually there's actually a lot of depth in that answer i feel like with two-face specifically whether it's like the dark knight or if it's or if it's like the cartoons, it's always like he leaves his morality up to choice. And yeah. that's similar to like what Huck says, like not specifically in seven or eight, but like in nine specifically, like he's very choice oriented. And I feel like there's a lot of depth with that in terms of like, like, yeah. oh, you know, whichever side it lands on, that's where I'm going. And that's what Hux is like. So I feel like that's what Hux is like operating on. So I feel like that's actually a really good answer. He's led by ego, and mm-hmm. ego is the enemy. You know, mm-hmm. there's that great yeah. book by Ryan Holiday, which I which I love. Um, so, gonna pose these to you guys as like not a dyad, but just two of them together: mm-hmm. Kylo Ren and Palpatine. Like, who, what do you think of, about those characters? Yeah, uh, go for it. Uh, Clone Wars saved. Uh, um, what do you think, Kylo Ren and Palpatine? Kylo Ren and Palpatine, that's a very interesting one, because there's a lot of, like, I mean, there's a lot of, like, good duos in DC, like, there are, there's, like, superior duos, but with, like, villain duos, duos, I feel like, I don't know, actually, I would have to think about that one. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's, that's a tough one. I will say, I think that Palpatine is probably the most, um, for me anyway, is the most Joker-like character. Um, the, the different, the difference for me, I guess, is that, um, Palpatine was creating all of this chaos for a specific purpose and the Joker is kind of creating chaos just for chaos's sake. 
Um, so, but I, th- I think that's probably the, the closest to me, um, for Kylo Ren. I mean, he, I don't know. He's almost like a, like a killer croc type of a <laughs> type of a character where, where, where he's just, um, you know, he's just going to come unhinged all the time. He's easily, easily provoked, easily, you know, manipulated into doing what of what all of the other, you know, kind of big bads want to do. Um, so I think, I think killer croc for Kylo Ren and yeah, I think, I think probably some sort of, some sort of Joker variant for, yeah. for Palpatine for me. Mm-hmm. We don't get a lot of killer croc stories these days. I feel like we would really benefit from one of those. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I feel like what just popped into my head for that as a duo for Palpatine and Kylo Ren was, um, I, I'm not sure if it was in Batman the Animated Series or Batman Beyond. I'm, pretty, I'm like, I'm guessing it's Batman Beyond. It was the arc, it was a story arc where the Joker and Harley Quinn kidnapped Tim Drake. Is it, um, and um, Batman and Batgirl, they come only to find that Tim Drake is like a mini Joker. And mm-hmm. they end up finding like, oh, you know, Tim Drake, Robin, he ends up turning on the Joker at the last moment. And I feel like that, I feel like could be like a really good like match with Kylo Ren and Palpatine because the Joker and Palpatine, they're really just like manipulating look at like, I mean, for all intents and purposes, a child and Kylo Ren only breaks free of that with like Han Solo's memory as did Tim Drake did with Batman and, and, and Barbara. So, uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, I think. And uh, that that leaves you, Cassie. It's Kylo Ren, and you have Palpatine. What do you think? Uh, Kylo Ren. I think he's kind of like a Jason Todd because I feel like he kind of comes from that like lineage of like the Bat family, but he's kind of the failed one, but still has some goodness underlying that. So, like, mm-hmm. I mean, if Kylo Ren was given like or Ben Solo, you know, was given the ch- chance to like kind of live after he became better, like. I kind of don't like how, like, people are just, like, killed off in Star Wars, you know? Like, I'd rather see some living atonement, because I think it's kind of more like life. But, mm-hmm. I don't know, like, maybe in a world where, like, Jason Todd kind of got some therapy, you know? Like, maybe that's... I mean, if... Hi- hypothetically, if Kylo Ren were a Batman character in an AU and got therapy and didn't die. So oh, yeah. if you can mm-hmm. keep up with that, like good for you. <laughs> I feel like with a lot of these characters, they could use therapy and <laughs> like, especially Star Wars characters, but um, I, I'm not sure. If, you know what? I feel like it's probably as good as time as any. Um, I feel like this is going to be like a really small spoiler for my uh, Storm of the Assist story, but um, shameless plug here. But um, I feel like, I know I'm getting off topic, but um, I feel like with like therapy, like any, like I feel like a good character for like in universe, like a Star Wars, like if there was a character in Star Wars who would become a therapist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like it would be Harrison Bueller. Like she would be the perfect therapist for like everyone. Such a good one. Yeah, oh, for not sure, only for because sure. not only because um, the voice actress Vanessa Marshall, she voiced. Uh, um, Black Canary and she was the therapist in Young Justice so there's that but there's also she's like she she basically played the therapist role throughout all of Rebels so I feel like there's something there it's mm-hmm. like because I'm sure like I, I like I know like for a fact like there's like regular like career options for like Star Wars characters in the Star Wars universe so I feel like if I feel like even like she would be motivated if like seeing like all the trauma that the Rebels and the Imperials alike they go through. I feel like she would probably want to pursue that after Battle of Endor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, like, to finish off the sequel trilogy, uh, Palpatine, he just seemed like he was having the time of his life mm-hmm. in Episode Nine, and just kind of cackling like a madman and like, mm-hmm. okay, I guess he's happy. I'll try to be happy, too. So I guess the Joker, because it, it's kind of like the Bat family is the Skywalkers, you know, and, like, their main villain is just Palpatine. It was Palpatine all along. I hope there is an Agatha all along, you know, kind (laughs) of cover with Palpatine. I feel like, I feel like there, there has to be on YouTube. Yeah, there has to be. be. Yeah. 
quicker. And there should be a Kraya all along, you know, rendition too. So <laughs> that one, that one, I feel like it'd be more obscure. I feel like like it would take longer for someone to make that. Yeah. So maybe we have to make it. Like, mm-hmm. oh no, you know, yeah. but. <laughs> That's right. So that wraps up the sequels, and then we kind of have Kotor, Kotor one and two. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, starting with the Kotor of it all, you know, um, I was thinking like we could kind of break up the main three, like Revan, Karth, Bastila, like the main three. We mm-hmm. could kind of discuss those, and then we have like some side characters, and then kind of the villains. So, yeah. Um, Starting with you, Clone Wars Saved, like Revan Karth and Bastila, like individually, who do who do they kind of remind you of? I, I feel like um with we can we can include like loose Batman related characters like Superman yeah. and Roman all those. Mm-hmm. I feel like sure. Bastila, like she would be like a very like a very good one, like Wonder Woman. Because I feel like there's a lot of similarities there and like who they are and like what they try to do and how like Bastil is tempted by um, Darth Malak at, at the very end. So was Wonder Woman with Ares, and they both had that split. They they both had that slimmer of like or that little taste of the dark side, and they were like, "No, I'm good." Yeah, these are these are kind of tricky, especially Revan mm-hmm. is kind of tricky for me. Oh yeah, um, he's, yeah. Just just kind of kind of due to the. The identity so i mean the ob- <laughs> the obvious one is is to say two-face right because mm-hmm. he has, yeah, the, has, has the two identities um and i think that that's that's probably kind of fair to say that he'd be kind of a two-face where you know part of him really is trying to do good but he has kind mm-hmm. of this you know unbridled you know yeah really really a violent kind of side to him that you know can can just come in and out um but i i think that you know, saying two faces is a little bit of a cop out, so I'm gonna have to think on yeah. on Revan a little bit. Um, so I feel like with Revan, it's very difficult because he's a very like self insert type character, and like I feel like that's always bugging me a little. Like, oh, you know, like Revan's like so great and all these things, but it's like, I mean, yes, for like people who read the book, that's like a valid reason. Like, you know, the character is the way the author's intended. But I feel like with like the mainstream sort of audience, mm-hmm. it's like Revan is this character that you could throw yourself into, and while that is like phenomenal for like the gaming experience of like being yourself in the Star Wars universe it makes it really hard to like I would say like narrow down Revan as this sort of distinct person with their own personality and all these things but Mm -hmm. I'd say like Two-Face is a good assumption I'd also say um trying to think of like a like a not like a Two-Face character but also like a character who struggles with that morality yeah yeah Revan Revan's yeah Revan is tough um, Karth, I'm, I would say most reminds me, um, would probably, probably be like the Robin character, Ro- uh, Robin, Robin de Bastila. Um, yeah, just, just cause he's, he's like the, uh, very, uh, archetypal, like sidekick type mm-hmm. of a character, um, especially to her. And then Bastila for me, I think is, um, Cassie had talked a little bit about him, uh, we were doing the sequels, but I think she's mm-hmm. kind of like this Jason Todd type of a character, oh, yeah. um, especially um, as you get to like the end of the story in the game uh, with her fall and kind of kind of return to. But you think that there's probably it's she's never going to line up exactly with the Jedi Council like she did before. But uh, yeah, those are those are kind of my three. Uh, you said you said that Karth you thought was easy. So uh, who do you see as yeah. Karth here? Quinn, I'd say. say um... It, it really comes to me green arrow oliver queen not like the oh, arrowverse okay. version but like more like the cartoon versions like young justice oh yeah um like uh justice league unlimited like all those things like he's like a very um i'd say like not only do like the voices they sound like so similar uh raphael sabarge with all the other actors but um like just like the way how he operates like there was this one moment in justice league unlimited Right now, it was like I think it was like with a, like a, a skirmish with Cadmus and like Supergirl and Superman like wanted to take him out. But right now, it was like like you know we need to figure out all the facts before we do something. And I feel like that's like very in tune with Karth. Like he always wanted to be in the loop. Like his literal words in the game, it's like he wanted to be in the loop before he made a decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, um, 
Karth, I I do see Karth as Revan and Vassal is equal, even though he doesn't have the Force. And mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, definitely. It, it's kind of funny because like Batman doesn't have powers, Superman does. But in mm -hmm. my mind, like I was like, is Karth a Jim Gordon? Then I was like, no, I see him more of a like, yeah. like a Superman. He's way too young. Yeah, he's yeah. he's like Jim Gordon. Like art, like I don't want to use archetype license. Like that's I don't know. That's I feel like just like Jim Gordon. Like typically he's a, he's always the older gruff character. So I feel like a young like Garth is like I, I'd say mid forties. So he's really kind of like not not all too old. So he's more yeah the younger character. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then like for Basla, it's kind of hard because like. Mm -hmm. There's, There's so many, so much to in the DC universe character, yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, part of me is like, I don't see her as like a poison ivy, Harley Quinn, oh, definitely not. No. or you know, Catwoman. But like, part of me sees her a bit as Hush. Um, oh yeah, or a I Jason Todd, Hush. and then yeah. kind of mixed with Barbara Gordon. So mm -hmm. if anyone out there knows of like a really good one for one uh, character, please let me know. Uh, mm -hmm. Cause it, it, I don't know, like Basla, I would, I would kind of say like, she kind of goes through more, uh, mm -hmm. of an arc no, even no, maybe first. than Revan, because I think she has more agency because her memories aren't taken from her, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Yum. And then she's more yeah. developed. Yeah. And then uh, for Revan, guess what I'm going to say? I mean, I think I've already said it, but Batman, uh, Batman. Oh yeah, definitely. That, that'd be a good one. Like given what we know. He wears a mask okay. all the time, and <laughs> he kind of does his own thing, like, not quite Jedi, not quite Sith, you know, like, I mean, it's very different to dress up as a bat and fight crime. He's not a cop, he's not a villain, he's, like, his own type of hero. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Mm. Okay. okay. Yeah. I would say, like, definitely with, like, Revan, like, even though, again, you know, it's not a whole lot to him, like, for the mainstream audience, but, like, with, like, his basic struggle of good and evil, I feel like that goes with Batman. Like, he does have, like, Batman does struggle with, do I kill or do I don't? In, yeah. like, some stories, and, like, how far do we want to take this? And that's the same thing that Revan does. Like, he's, like, how far, how far, like, the player, like, it's, like, how far do I go to, like, do I want to help people? Do I want to hurt people? What's the outcome? Yeah. Batman mm -hmm. is so interesting, like... Mm -hmm. I wonder what would happen if, like, Gotham, like, the city just, like, got therapy, you know, like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel yeah. like Batman, um, especially with, like, the new movie I loved, like, so much. I feel like that's my, I want to say that's, like, my, one of my favorite interpretations of the character. Because, like, I feel like, for me, like, they got him, like, really right with, like, how he's not only just, like, brooding and dark and vengeance but he's also a symbol of hope and like he needed to learn that he was yeah batman is just like what is batman not you know but yeah, i feel like you could like do like endless hours of like a video essay on him because it's like so multi-layered like pe like I, like i've seen like video essays that go like two or three hours and it's like that's not even scratching the surface because he's such a co like a psychologically complex character yeah I mean, we kind of John Cocteau a lot of depths here, but like maybe we mm -hmm. could just become like a a Batman podcast to mm -hmm. see if anyone mm -hmm. noticed, you know. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But yeah, um, so this one is kind of a different mixture. We can't get every character in KOTOR just because oh, yeah. there's a lot, mm -hmm. but um, we have the Dantooine Jedi Council mission in Candorous. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you guys, how do you guys see them? And it's going to be fun. I feel like mission, I feel like it's really obvious and just like staring in the face. I feel like maybe my first instinct is Batgirl, like just like out of sheer like a teenage girl, like a teenage girl who's like taking on this massive responsibility of helping others out of like the goodness of her own heart. And it's like, right. That's like just like what she wants to do. And she's like, she like relies a lot on. I mean, like, she's self-sufficient, but she relies a lot on, like, those she cares about, and, like, she, she always wants to work with others. Like, she's a very, like, play nice with others type of person. Mm -hmm. And, of course, just the attitude, so I'd say definitely Mission Val would be, like, a Batgirl type character. Yeah, and she helps you, like, 
you know sneak around and stuff so that's kind of oh, yeah. like like a like yeah, the oracle uh, version of uh, a mm -hmm. in there so so yeah so i think that that makes sense um let's see who was the other one here candorous uh and the jedi council Ooh, okay um a Candorous is is just he, you know, he's a mandalorian he just he loves mm -hmm. to to go in and do some fighting um i don't know i'm just i'm gonna i'm gonna go with the character we haven't really uh talked about yet uh he's kind of like bane i guess maybe a oh little yeah bit. that's good um for Candorous, um you know mm -hmm. just just kind of this uh menacing figure uh quick to action but very very thoughtful about why mm -hmm. he's doing it so i think maybe bane and then for the jedi council oh i don't know um probably not quite as corrupt as the as the gotham city police department mm -hmm. <laughs> um although although certainly still not great um i guess if i if i had to assign them as a character yeah probably probably something if uh like a single character to summarize like the jedi council probably something like like the penguin or you know any of oh, like yeah. the any of like the crime boss uh type type ones who are who are you know a, a little shady you know not really willing to do the dirty work you know they're going to send out uh you know bastard to do their dirty work for them uh stuff like yeah. that so so i think mm -hmm. maybe uh something like that uh but that's kind of my take on those three there i guess yeah for me the jedi council is kind of like the failed gotham politicians because i feel like they're trying to do good but they're serving their own mm -hmm. interests first yeah, and, like in the in the Batman movie, there was yeah, a lot of that going on. They're complicated, mm -hmm. and and then like I feel bad, but like maybe I'm just gonna be honest. Uh, when I first was thinking about Mission, I was like, oh yeah, young Richard mm -hmm. Grayson, like the boy wonder, and I was like, wait yeah. a second, I have internalized so much misogyny. Like Barbara <laughs> Gordon, Batgirl was right there, so like was right there. Yeah. I'm feeling bad. Mm. Okay, like I failed feminism. Um, mm. <laughs> and then Candorous, um, one of the biggest missed opportunities, I think, is uh, Deathstroke. Like, it would have been so cool oh. to see the take on Deathstroke, Deathstroke in the DC. Yeah. DCU? DCEU? I forget what it's yeah, called. Yeah, I don't know what it is anymore. But, um, Warner Brothers doesn't yeah. even know. So. I mean, there's 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 some that are like, Fact. you know, Fact. every everybody <laughs> like has their own, everybody has their own, like fit the Marvel universe, like you could easily say, oh, you know, this is the Marvel universe, both every, every DC thing. It's like, the movies specifically, people could like say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm I like these movies and that movies. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, you could, you, you could say like, oh, this is in my head canon and all of these things. And it's like, I don't know, for me, like, uh, there's a lot of good ones. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm like a, you know, I, I mean, like, there's a lot of people who love the Snyderverse, but as, like, as good as, you know, like, the, like the craft is, I'd say, but I, I'm not really a Snyderverse person, but I would say, like, fair, you know, yeah. a, a lot of the, a lot of, like, the solo ones, like Aquaman, Wonder Woman, both Wonder Womans, um shazam the batman i feel like those are all really good yeah and then the final three characters they would not get along like if they had to spend time <laughs> oh, in yeah. the room alone together but jolie hk47 and darth malik i feel like jolie definitely jim gordon i want to say like this like this iterate like the batman iteration of jim gordon comes to mind because like so, like they're both like very they're they're characters who like just like roll with the punches and it's like very like they, they have the good interest at heart but they're like less eager and intense about doing things they're more practical mm -hmm. i'd say yeah hk yeah hk47 i feel like was like a dc character he he definitely be a super villain i'd say that much because like there's <laughs> oh yeah psych, like total psychopath but um I'd say that he's very like robotic in what he does. I feel like I'm trying to think of like a DC, maybe like maybe Mister Mister Freeze, because like there's a lot of like sadis sad sadistic tendencies in there, but also possibly like Killer Croc, because like first everything is meat. Okay, um, kind of, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So so I like I like the Jolie as uh, Commissioner Gordon. I actually <laughs> think that. Jolie is probably the most like Batman 
um mm-hmm. as oh, yeah. as he was growing up but i think by the time we meet him in the game he's he's kind of moved on he's like retired mm-hmm. batman at that point like, um which like, makes him uh kind of a, a good commissioner gordon because i think you know commissioner gordon wishes that he could do the mm-hmm. things that batman just... could do right so yeah. um like, so, yeah so i yeah exactly so i think that i think that the commissioner gordon one is there but yeah definitely i i definitely see a lot of parallels with uh mm-hmm. with batman um hk i think i'm probably is probably i guess most like uh for me i think probably the most like um the joker of any of these people oh, he yeah. just he just mm-hmm. wants to he just wants to cause mayhem and mm-hmm. uh you know <laughs> get, get into fights and cause chaos mm-hmm. he doesn't have like really any sort of like mm-hmm. goal in mind other than i guess you know technically he uh, is Revan's droid so he's he's going along mm-hmm. with Revan but he just he's just along for the uh the chaotic ride there um and then Darth Malak that's that's oh, a tricky that's an one. Interesting one yeah yeah um, it's and I and I've already used Jason Todd because I think that really you know kind of yeah. kind of his betrayal um mm-hmm. with, it's all about with betrayal. uh you know really is uh is an important part of his character uh maybe he's kind of like um like Harley Quinn kind of in a way mm-hmm. where he was seduced over to, you know, going down the dark this, side, uh, dark side yeah. uh, by Revan, um, you know, similar to, to how she was by, by the Joker. So, yeah. So maybe I think um, he's kind of like the, the Harley Quinn character uh, here in, uh, in star Wars. Uh, yeah. What about, what about you, Cassio? We got Jolie HK and Darth Malak to round out the uh, KOTOR team here. Okay. Uh, for me, Jolie, it's Jim Gordon. Uh, for me, that's the, mm-hmm. probably the easiest one for one besides Revan. And then HK47, I literally did not think about the Joker and like it was like right there. It was right, it was right there. Yeah. But I wrote, you know, uh, the Riddler, kind of like the cartoon Riddler that just has fun, you know, like, because yeah. I just think like HK47 is kind of witty and like yeah, HK, like, for me, like the Riddler, just like mm-hmm. is funny and witty. So, and <laughs> yeah. like they're villains. So, uh, yeah. That's and then it. Darth Malak for me, uh, is kind of like two characters. The kind of a little bit like Bane, kind of like the mm-hmm. the comics version. Like he's just a big hulking, you know, tough guy. Because like yeah. that's kind of what um, Darth, Darth Malak, Malak was. Sure. At mm-hmm. first, tries to be yeah just like like a big tough guy before he like was given a lot of depth i would say mm-hmm. and then i would also say like uh, revan and malik are kind of like two characters that like started Have to go in, hand in hand yeah very similar characters mm-hmm. and if things had gone different, maybe it could have been Darth Malik, you know, that like got his mind mm-hmm. wiped and maybe would have had a second chance. Yeah. So who knows? Like, so like mm-hmm. I kind of was like a uh, Riddler from the Batman. So. Cause yeah. like, there's a lot of like, I feel like with like Darth Malik, there's a lot of like victim, like self victimization. Like he's like, Oh, you know, we were a team, but then you like betrayed me. It's all about, you know, what you did to me on all these things. And that's the same Thing with like the Riddler like he's without going into spoilers he's like he very like relies on victimization to like justify his actions yeah for sure yeah definitely and I think that rounds out uh KOTOR uh mm-hmm. although <laughs> I would say that if there were a Gizka or maybe this is more of a T3, it would remind me of Ace mm. the Bat Hound, you know? Oh yeah. I feel like <laughs> any and all go. of the <laughs> any and all of like the droids, like not like the protocol droids specifically, but more like astromech types, like they would all be sort of like the super pets of like the Star Wars <laughs> per se. Yeah. That's right, that's right. I guess that kind of brings us to Kotor too. So uh oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Really. So a lot we... of complex yeah characters. a lot like the the universe of the batman i guess mm-hmm. and just kind of batman in general um, yeah mm-hmm. so kind of i think like we'll divide them into groups of three mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and it'll be like, hilarious like, the way i group some of them yeah. like because they would not get mm-hmm. along uh <laughs> no i don't know if this is the main three of kotor too but i guess it works but um 
Jedi Exile, Kreia, and mm-hmm. Atten. Yeah, I feel like, no, those are definitely the main three. Yeah, for sure. Because, like, they're the first ones you run into. This is going to be like when you get a group assignment at school and the teacher assigns your groups, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's always fun. Yeah. 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 Um, and I yeah. say that very sarcastically. That's right, that's right. So Jedi, Exile, Kreia, and Atten. Okay, the, these ones are going to be tricky, I think. But I don't, I don't think there's any wrong answer because I think that all of these people could be any yeah. of these people. <laughs> okay, so Jedi Exile. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, let, let, let's let's start with her. Um, that one's. Yeah, these are these are all so tricky. Mm-hmm. Um, a big part of her story is is atonement, and I'm trying to think mm-hmm. of who in uh, you know the Batman universe is is really going through you know, kind of, kind of those same kinds of, of atonement. So, I mean, you have, you have Batman, I guess, is, is the obvious Mm -hmm. uh, pick there. Uh, You could make a case for, uh, you know, Jim Gordon having to go to atonement as well. But I, I think I'm going to go with the Batman as my Jedi exile uh, character, Um, you know, really has led kind of this, kind of this gray Mm -hmm. um, existence, you know, within the, the Jedi council, um, you know, she gets she gets outcast from the Jedi, very similar to the way that Batman is an outcast within uh, Gotham, Gotham. You know, as yeah. as times, um, you know, as as the blame falls on him. So I think that the mm-hmm. Jedi exile is my is my Batman character. Here, oh yeah, the Kotor too. So I feel like for me, I already brought up the character, but I feel like I don't remember which one I compared it to before. But like, I feel like this one is a little. I could back up this case a little stronger with again injustice harley quinn specifically like injustice 2 i guess with the exile like the the, they they both like harley and the exile they both did bad things and what did their sort of superiors do the joker and the jedi but but they cast them aside with exile it was really like redemption i mean like again like she's like without like a mainstream perspective she's more blank slate but like it's like the redemption arc i feel like for the exile like mirrors hardly as like trying to like find a way to be good after having done so many bad things and for the exile that's like saving the galaxy with like Adam and all of them but and for like harley it's becoming like batman's partner and like helping him out to like mm-hmm. atone for all the harm she's caused him so i feel like there's parallels there we got next we have we have Kreia and Atten. So Kreia for mm-hmm. me. She's so uh, interesting. Yeah, she's she's super yeah, interesting. She's so um, fa- like, <laughs> fascinating. And I, I guess, you know, you could you could uh, like I said at the, at the top of this one, you could you could assign a lot of these characters to a lot of these characters because they're all kind of so nuanced and uh, kind of pick and choose. I think I think for me, Kreia is probably kind of kind of like a Riddler version. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, definitely. Like a female uh, Riddler. She she obviously is. I I don't know that I don't necessarily know say that I w- would say that she's smarter than everyone, but she definitely knows more than everyone. Um, I feel in the like story. she's smarter than everyone. And you know, kind of kind of the kind of the same way. She's she's kind of leading you on the path mm-hmm. that she wants to lead you on. And I think mm-hmm. that's the way that the the Riddler um, is kind of mm-hmm. operating. You know, especially in this uh, new iteration of the Riddler. So I think I think Kreia mm-hmm. is the Riddler, and then and then Atten. Oh man, it, does that mm-hmm. Atten is a Batman character? Okay, let's see here. Yeah, I might have I might have to I might have to yeah. think about that one for a second. Um, uh, Cassio, why don't okay. you jump in and uh, mm-hmm. rescue us here? Jedi exile Kreia and Atten. <laughs> uh, who are your Who are your picks here for these three? Okay, so Jedi exile. It's a very different type of character, and I feel like mm-hmm. anything I say, I'm gonna fail. Um, <laughs> no, you're that's sorry. okay. No. But, that's all right. That's a. That's yeah. <laughs> um, no, failure is the greatest teacher. That's what Luke says. It's, yeah, that's what he said, right? There are nutrients in failure. Sky- in Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. yeah. I guess, like for Jedi Exile, I would say Bruce Wayne, like kind of like powerless. Mm-hmm. You know, like maybe like at the beginning of their journey, you know, mm-hmm. um, just someone who's open to like kind of needing to like re-engage with like what the world is, you know? And then Kreia, 
I can definitely see where you guys were coming from for the yeah, other Vampire. ones, but uh, yeah. I kind of see it as like she's someone who taught the Jedi Exile and Revan. Very different students, you know, and I kind of think it's Ra's al Ghul because it's like someone Ooh. who knows everything about the world, like yeah. mm-hmm. kind of beyond it a little, you know, like mad at like the force and everything. So I'm just like, I see Raish, you know. Mm-hmm. And then uh, for Atten, hold on to your hats if you're wearing them. Uh, <laughs> I said Mr. Freeze. Um, okay. Atten's a really, his characterization is all over the place. And like, yeah, it's a little bit like, I'm a computer and like, it's a program that I really just can't read. It's all over the place. Yeah. And like something has been lost in translation. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm like very confused, you know, but uh, if you kind of look at his backstory, like, he kind of was saved by a Jedi prisoner, you know, who kind of mm-hmm. taught him how to see everything and then kind of became a little bit better. There are shades mm-hmm. of Atten and Mr. Freeze, so I'm like, um, yeah. let's go with this. It's not a good, yeah. perfect option, but it's interesting yeah. at least, so. Yeah. So I feel like with Atten, like, he's a very, like, from what I've experienced so far, because I've only done so far in the game, um, it's it's with him it's all about like mind games and like manipulation not to like Kreia's degree but like still it's like a more casual version of that mm-hmm. so i'd say like a character and i'm figuring this out while i talk but it's um it's a character who like very like likes to play people but for the right reason so i gotta go with maybe i want to say the the question of you know, vic sage you know um mm-hmm. Because, like, he, you know, he was also very, like, investigative and he would want, he'd stick his nose in other people's business and never want anyone to stick nose in his, stick their nose in his business. But, like, there's a lot of, like, sort of, like, sort of detective style reasoning going on with, like, Adam. Like, he would always go, like, oh, you know, you, you're, you're like this because it's, like, he would often make, like, sarcastic, like, declarations of, oh, you're, the, you're this type of person. And that's the same thing, like, que- the question would do. Yeah, Atten, Atten's a tricky one. Um, mm-hmm. like, like you said, his, Cassia, his characterization is kind of all over the place, but his his story is really compelling. Um, I think mm-hmm. that that we'll have you know fun when we're getting into the characters a little bit more in depth. I actually mm-hmm. think we'll have a good time talking about um, Atten. Uh, yeah, I mean, in a sense, he's kind of like a, like a Robin type of a character, um, mm-hmm. especially to to the Jedi exile. Um, very much kind of this for lack of a better term, kind of like a tag along kind of presence mm-hmm. uh, for him yeah. the same way that you had Karth uh, to Bastila in, in the first game. Mm-hmm. So a little bit of that, I could see a little bit of um, what's the, the one uh, cop's name from the, is it, uh, like Clayface, I think mm-hmm. um, where he was, you know, kind of, kind of su- supportive of, of the Jedi in a way. And then, and then mm-hmm. turned bad and really had to, you know, kind of be brought back into the fold. So a little bit mm-hmm. of that maybe, uh, for Atten, just in just in his uh, his story, but yeah, he's he's kind of a tricky one, like you said, because his story beats are a little, you know, kind of kind of all over the place. He's not quite as uh, linear, maybe as uh, some of these other ones here. Yeah, I feel like Clayface. I feel like that's fair because like I I don't like reading to the comments a whole lot, but like one of them, rec- I think they came out recently, Clayface uh, or Batman and Batwoman. They recruit it. They recruit. Clayface is a part of it as a part of a team and mm-hmm. as a as a part of like a covert team with like spoiler and Robin and and or not spoiler yeah no spoiler Robin and um, I'm trying to think of the one with the purple hood um, Stephanie Brown whatever her um, oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah so like I feel like because like Atten was like a character who was bad like he, I, I I'm I'm pretty sure like he was like a Jedi hunter of some sort but like he like wanted to move past all that and just be who he wants to be inside. And now I feel like that, that goes with Clayface. Like he can, he's also like symbolically Clayface. He can mold into anyone. He can look like anyone, but all he really wants to be inside is himself. And like, he can never do that because he always has to take the form of someone else. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. 
so quarantine room two is <laughs> Beodur, Atris, and Darth Nihilus. So they would kill each other. Like honestly, oh, yeah, like, no. yeah. all of them would be dead. So. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't that wouldn't be great. That wouldn't be great. From that would last for three seconds at top at best. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, uh, these ones are maybe maybe not necessarily clear cut, but uh, I think I think Bowder um, is probably like the Lucius Fox uh, character because mm-hmm. I mean obviously you have him he's the he's the one building all of your stuff you know same as mm-hmm. what Lucius Fox is doing for uh, Bruce Wayne but he knows who the exile is he mm-hmm. knows you know more or less uh, her kind of backstory and <laughs> and what she's all about and that's and that's the same for mm-hmm. Lucius Fox um, and you know just there to to provide assistance, to provide an ear, to provide some, mm-hmm. you know, mentorship, uh, when possible. Yeah. But I think, uh, Lucius Fox for Bowder, um, Atris is a, is a little trickier. So I'm going to, mm-hmm. I'm going to skip her for right now. Um, Darth Nihilus, I think, um, for me, I see him or Darth Nihilus. I see as kind of like the Raz al Ghul kind of character mm-hmm. who is just, you know, kind of bent on basically destroying the world to to rebuild it i you have you have darth nihilus who i guess is uh mm-hmm. eating eating planets for their oh <laughs> yeah for their for their sustenance so mm-hmm. I, I i see kind of some some parallels there you know and and just like the yeah. complete obliteration and you know renewal of life so i see i see kind of that there um atris is a tricky one so i'm gonna i'm gonna mm-hmm. take a mm-hmm. pause on her and uh turn it over to you clone war saved and uh see what you have yeah. to say about these three while i uh think about uh, Atris there for a second. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like with Bowder, like, you really hit a nail on the head. It's like, that's like Lucius Fox. He helps out. But with Nihilus, I was thinking, um, I mean, the first one that came to mind was Killer Croc because, you know, the eating mm-hmm. thing. But more so, like, I don't, like, Nihilus, like, his personality is really focused on, like, his, like, biological desires of, like, needing food for, like, the dark side and all that stuff so i feel like like emotionally i don't want to say like nihilus like he has emotion but like i feel like the closest thing that he has to that is you know like gr- like selfish like not only selfishness but specifically like egotism and greed and mm-hmm. i feel like that would fall in line with larfley's the orange lantern because oh, okay. um he i mean like he Sir, I only know surface level things about Larfleece, but like he's a he's a character who's very like possessive of what he has and won't give it to anyone else. And I feel like that's Nihilus. Like he's very possessive of like taking life, and he's like, you know, if anyone's gonna like suck the life out of someone, it's gonna be me because like you may just like want to do it because like I don't know, it makes you feel good, but I need it to survive. And that's kind of like Larfleece doesn't have that, but like it's that's his mentality like oh i need this to survive and like and it's it's more so behind that mask it's just i need it because it's me so yeah atris i feel um atris as far as i know she does become like a villain near the end right like as someone like who like she starts out like she's obviously very manipulative but she goes under the pretense of being good Mm -hmm. i feel like that's very like it's like very like oh she wants to like create a mask for everyone to look good and but she's in reality she's like bad and she she wants to own it but like she she only ends up owning it like when she realizes there's nothing holding her back and that's like i want to say a little bit of barbara minerva cheetah from the wonder woman 1984 because that's very in tune with i have all this like with Atris gaining the Jedi Order and Cheetah getting and getting her powers from the from the stone that Maxwell Lord had. It's very like, oh I love all, all this newfound power. Yeah. But it ends up being self centered and it's like you know, it's like you could you could do things the right way with Cheetah giving giving back her powers or giving back her powers the way Diana lost Steve. Mm. And for like Atris it's actually running the Jedi Order the way it was meant to be around and not just like running it in like a certain way but like I feel like the same it's like Barbara Barbara and 
and Atrix, I feel like they have a similar sort of trajectory of getting this newfound thing and at first feeling like, oh, you know, I'm going to do something with this, but then slowly letting it consume them. Yeah. I think now that I've kind of had a chance to think about it, I think the Atris for me is kind of like a like a Mr. Freeze character and oh, not yeah. necessarily just <laughs> just because she's uh, living on the on the uh, icy the planet there. white hair, kind of basic. White hair, you know? white robes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but it, it's kind of one of those things where, where, you know, she starts out and you know, she she's a member of the council and, and maybe has mm-hmm. has good intentions, but just as um, kind of her her inner conflict and turmoil and her ambitions start to kind of take over uh, her persona as mm-hmm. as you carry through. That's that's kind of similar to Mr. Freeze in a lot of ways where at some point it doesn't become, you know, it, it's not about her serving, you know, the rule of the council. It's about her serving the rule of herself. Um, so yeah. I think that I think that Mr. Freeze is who I'm going to go with for my uh, mm-hmm. Atris character. Yeah, um, I hope you guys are ready for this quarantine room. But uh, let's yeah. let's do it. Oh, you didn't give us yours, Bowder, Atris, and Darth Oh, yeah. oh I know. I, w- I was giving my my. Uh, oh, oh, this is your yeah. core. Oh, okay. I got I was you. Like, I got get you. ready for this, okay. guys. Because um, <laughs> for me, Bowder is kind of like Lucius Fox, like someone who mm-hmm. kind of supports. Yeah. Um, technologically bruce wayne like technologically mm-hmm. you know and like a good person great voice you know uh yeah mm-hmm. that's right. and then atris um for me it's kind of between two characters two face or catwoman and like in my mind mm-hmm. it's like, like catwoman it's not like you know not just because she's female and not that i think like atris is provocative mm-hmm. or anything it's just like someone who kind of can like see things from their point of view kind of get themselves to be mm-hmm. like it's okay if i mm-hmm. do this for me you know like kind of justifying it yeah you know? so that's how i kind of see atris it's like all, yeah. yeah it's like all about the, like the like because catwoman's like a thief right and like atris she sort of takes what she wants from the jedi and does her own thing with it not in like a good way that like Luke yeah. tries to do it and yeah the post Re- Return of the Jedi, but she's like, oh, I'm going to take what I want from the Jedi Order and I'm going to inject my own sort of agenda in there and it's going to be great for me, but then everyone else, is like, it's not great for them. Yeah. I mean, when we get to the Atris episode, it may turn mm-hmm. into a musical episode where I talk <laughs> about... Uh, it's right. not it's not Jean Valjean. Who's the, the corrupt cop in uh, Les Mis? Javert. Okay. Javert, yeah, 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 that's right. Atris is a very much like Javert, um, mm-hmm. because it's like if you have like a concept of morality that's so black and white, mm-hmm. you can really do some bad things thinking they're good, mm-hmm. you know. And like yeah. I kind of see Atris as like that. So, mm-hmm. spoiler alert: we may do a musical Les Mis episode when we cover Atris. So, I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And then Darth Nihilus, it makes sense in my head, but he's an evil swamp thing. Oh, <laughs> okay. swamp thing. I, I feel like definitely like has to do with nature. I feel like you got a really good case there. Yeah. But like nature is like he's being possessed. Like swamp thing, Alec Holland. That's the, I think that's the actual name. Like he's, he's a being that's very like, oh, you know, the green, like all humans are bad. And like, oh, you know, I need, I need to protect the green or I need to, you know, take care of nature. Mm-hmm. And obviously Nihilus at Nihilus taking care taking care of nature is, you know, take taking care of it in the like murdering way. But like still it's the same like, oh, you know, nature is like more important than humanity and like with Alcon, sometimes in a good way, but sometimes in a bad way. But with yeah. Nihilus it's always in a bad way. Okay, so next quarantine room. Um some of these characters might kill each other. Some of them will get along. Uh, mm-hmm. But we have Darth Sion. Is it Mikhail or Michael? Because I just say Michael, you know, but... Uh, yeah, I, th- I think I think Michael, yeah. Yeah, and then Mira. So that's mm-hmm. Quarantine Room 3 for KOTOR. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, yeah, so these ones are, are a little trickier as well. Mm-hmm. I think... Um, Darth Sion for me is probably he's probably someone that's 
that's like the penguin who never really seems to mm-hmm. be at the at the top of the food chain because I don't think that he's mm-hmm. you know I don't think he's at the at the top of your villain food chain here here in Kotor mm-hmm. um, certainly formidable um, you know certainly <laughs> certainly very passionate about doing mm-hmm. terrible terrible things but um, yeah I think he's he's just kind of always always playing a uh, second fiddle to to your real mm-hmm. villains there so um, I'm gonna go with penguin for uh, Darcyon. Michael, Mikhail, um, I think, I think, well, I, I already used, uh, uh, I think Robin, did I already use Robin? I don't know, but I'm going to use no, uh, Robin fine. again. There's many Robins. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's yeah. a lot of Robins. Um, and it's I think the that, and I, and I, I think that that's, uh, who I'm going with for Michael, just mm-hmm. because, cause he's really kind of really chasing after, um, the exile. He's, he's basically on this journey because he wants to wants to be by her and learn from her. Um, and he, mm-hmm. you know, he's, he's willing to, to kind of just go along with, with whatever she says and, and mm-hmm. join in there with that. Um, and then Mira, um, I'm going to go, I don't, I, we haven't used this one yet. So I'm going to go, uh, with poison Ivy for Mira. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, she's, she's, you know, very much, very much along from the ride, but has kind of this a little bit of a tortured past, and isn't necessarily doing things for bad or, bad reasons or good reasons, and they're and they're not even necessarily like like selfish mm-hmm. reasons. Um, she's just kind of existing in this world and and you know doing her own thing and just trying to mm-hmm. to get through and survive. And I think that that is kind of how I take Poison Ivy's story beats to be more mm-hmm. often than not. You know, she's really just trying to you know. She just wants. She just wants to hang out with her plants and have have a good time. Mm-hmm. And you know, sometimes yeah. that goes bad. Sometimes it's not as bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Mira, uh, Poison Ivy. So for me, I'm gonna pass on Mikhail Michael or whatever. How do you pronounce? How, however, it's pronounced because I've never actually <laughs> yeah. both. Ways I've never are. actually had any experience with the character, <laughs> so I'm just gonna do a cheat and pass. But fair, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, dark with or with Darth. I almost made the mistake of dark for some reason. Uh, Darth Scion. I, w- I definitely want to say Atrocitus, the Red Lantern, comes to mind. Oh, God. Because they're both, um, they're, they both feed off of anger. And like, it, like it, for Scion, it literally kills him. And as as far as I know, if you take off the Red Lantern ring for the, Le- for the Red Lantern core specifically, it kills you. So mm-hmm. it's like the same sort of, I have to immerse myself in like rage and anger and fear and all these things or else I'm going to die. And that's what's going on with Lothian. This is Mar. I feel like that's her full name. Um, I want to go because she's like a very like mysterious character. Like she obviously like does things on her own agenda. I'm tempted to say Catwoman, but like I feel like there's a better one. But like Catwoman, like just like top, just top of my mind. I feel like that's mm-hmm. who I would go for because they're both very. I mean, like I I feel like. Bisa, she was like a love interest for the male exile, I think. So I feel like that could go toe and toe with Catwoman and Batman, but also just like they don't give out a lot of stuff about their life. Like the main character, they have to find out stuff about Selena and Invisa Smart, respectively. And it's not just given to them, they have to find it out themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, that's it. Yeah. No, nice. Uh, what uh, what about you, Cassius? So we got uh, Darcyan, uh, Michael, Mikal, and uh, Mira. Uh, what about what about these three for you? Um, for me, like Darcyan does kind of like seem like a bane pretty easily, but um, oh yeah, he does kind of have a little bit of a thing for female exile, you know, like so it seems a little <laughs> bit Mister Freeze ish ish esque. Okay, I can I can it's, speak English I think it's sometimes. I, I, but... No, it's, I think it's ask, but you know. Ask. Yeah. yeah um, I don't know. Engli- yeah, English is my first language, and it's still like you know pronouncing. Yeah, I've dedicated my life to English, and I'm still like. But Mikhail, Michael, whatever his name is, Dick Grayson. I think I overused Dick Grayson, but. I feel like. He's good for a lot of characters because he he fits the archetype of like the the charming like character who wants to do good, I guess. Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like he's yeah. a he's a good dude, 
you know, and Mm -hmm. I think Dick Grayson's probably like the closest, like to like Mm -hmm. the best dude you have in the Bat family, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, like the most approachable one to talk to. Yeah. Then for Mira, I put Stephanie Brown, like kind of like a another uh, uh, Robin, I guess. Yeah. Mm Hmm. Because Mira, like, her characterization, like, she has a very rich kind of tumultuous Mm -hmm. history, but, like, for her, like, her character seems more in sync than, like, say, Atten, but, um, but, yeah, so I just kind of see her as someone who's good, you know? Yeah. Fighting the good fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. All right, our final (laughs) room. It might be an escape room or maybe just another oh. quarantine room. It's well, T3. this 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 is who you would want to have in your escape room, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you kind of do like Astro Droids a lot, so uh, <laughs> we have T three and Vesis. Oh yeah, that's right. So uh, we have we have the droid that does it all. He saves the crew time mm. and time again um, in Kotor two. Um, which, which basically just means, uh, and this, this is very simple. This is the easiest one. T3 is all of the bat gadgets plus the Batmobile oh, yeah. all in mm-hmm. one. Uh, he does yeah. it all. He, he does, <laughs> he repairs the Ebon Hawk. He goes in and goes on like some like stealthy stealth mission. Uh, he has all sorts of gadgets you can put on him. Uh, so he, he's just one big bat gadget for sure for the Jedi exile who I think I said was, uh, kind of like Batman. So, uh, so that's my pick for T3 there. Uh, Vsauce, that one's that one's a little trickier. Um, I think probably. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, I think. I I don't know. Uh, Vsauce, you know, she comes into your party, and you know, it really does form kind of kind of an allegiance to you. Um, even though Kreia has you uh, double thinking it the whole time, so part of me mm-hmm. wants to say that she's kind of like a Catwoman character. Um, she's kind of like a Harley Quinn character gone good. Um, so, so maybe, maybe that, maybe she's, she's like the flip side of a uh, Harley mm-hmm. Quinn for me. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with bad gadgets for T3 um, slash the Batmobile slash the Batwing, you know, all the, all the, all the vehicles, he gets to be all of them. Um, and then, yeah, some sort some sort of a uh, Harley Quinn uh, alternate universe uh, version yeah. for uh, Visas for me. Uh, what about you, uh, Clone Wars Save? We got our last two here. Um, I feel like T three. I want to go with my experience, with not only like just like observing him as a character, but like having him in like gameplay. Crypto, the super dog. I want to say because mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like he's technically he's got like all the symbolic superpowers of like helping out with like the panels and like getting through things, and it's always you know you can count on him. And Visa Smart, because she's like. Dark Knights is an like apprentice, so to speak, and she breaks off from him. So I'd say, um, trying to think of like a character who starts out like just like I, I feel like because like Beast is more like she, she's like her only thing, the only thing she knows is bad, but she ends up going good. Mm-hmm. I want to say, actually, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Anything, but I feel like, especially with, I feel like crypto is definitely that's that's a T three. But the other one, I'm not sure. Yeah, for yeah, me, T three. For me, T three is kind of like the, if not the chosen one, the true hero of the Kotor series. <laughs> the unsung hero. Yeah, because he's there in both of them. T three is really the most like Batman if you think about it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, Yeah. I mean, you kind of see some shades of the Oracle and Bat gadgets, but Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I almost named my dog Ace. So, like, uh, Mm -hmm. for me, T three is like Ace the Bat Hound, uh, Mm -hmm. and and I love T three. So, Mm -hmm. and then Visus. I always used to say Vices, and some people corrected me, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like, I just like played these games <laughs> way long ago, and mm-hmm. I mispronounce things all the time, yeah. but I try, you know. Uh, but Vesis, I think she's kind of like a Harley Quinn who's left the Joker mm-hmm. behind, yeah, and has found Poison Ivy and is on Team Good-ish, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. like Birds of Team Harley Quinn, Team Good Enough. 
That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, we probably didn't cover the character you wanted us to, but we covered a lot of them. So you should, <laughs> like, leave us a message or something. Yeah. And uh, if you if you think we missed some, you know, you can send us uh, whatever you think we missed and uh, we'll talk about it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. Let us know um, if you have any good Batman and uh, Star Wars Kotor parallels, um, because we want to hear about them. You can you can find me on the on the Instagram at astro underscore droid underscore, or you can send us a message on Twitter, uh, which is at Old Republic Pod. So yeah, let us let us know what you think about uh, kind of kind of our picks, and you know what you have for your own picks, or if there are any characters you you thought of that uh, we didn't think of, because we definitely want to hear all of that stuff. I mean, uh, we did do a Batman episode, uh, and in Batman. There is the bat signal. Um, mm-hmm. Where can all of our listeners find you and kind of support what you do? No, I get. I mean, like just you know, like in the like in like the comments of like my posts, or I guess, or stuff like that. Like, um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. So you can find Clone Wars Saved on Instagram and uh thanks again for coming on it was uh it's a fun unique episode to kind of talk about like uh, two kind of similar but distinct universes so yeah absolutely and this was our kind of second crack at uh talking about batman and comparing it to to star wars and i think it's fun to do kind of these different fandoms so Mm -hmm. uh yeah yeah, Yeah. we'll have to have to do that uh you know some more maybe with some other franchises Mm -hmm. here at at some point down the road, but yeah, definitely a good time. And thank you very much for joining yeah. us. Clone War yeah. saved everyone. Make sure you go yeah. check out that account. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And thanks for joining in on yeah. uh, this episode. Everyone listening out there may the force be with you.